So now we're going to start learning finally how to actually solve differential equations. And we're going to start off with a very useful skill, and that's solving separable equations. All right, let's look at an equation like this. Let's see if I could solve this without actually knowing any differential equation skills. The question is, if I took some function y and took its first derivative and it equaled x, is there some function y that I could come up with that would make this true? I think if I had this as a solution, if I went ahead and tested that, if I took the first derivative of both sides with respect to x, I would get dy dx on the left hand side and I would get x to the first power on the right hand side, which is exactly what I was trying to solve for. Now I am going to have to add one thing, because if I had some sort of constant there, if I took the first derivative with respect to x, it goes to zero. So I need to make sure I leave that plus c in there. Well, there's very few differential equations I'm going to be able to figure out this way. And let's see if I can come up with a systematic way of solving something like this rather than check and guess, which is what I just did. If I have dy dx equals x, if I rearrange both sides, I could come up with this. Now if I integrate both sides, I would get that y plus c equals 1 half x squared plus, well, let's call these c1 and c2 so I can keep them straight. Although actually, now that I think about it, I don't really need to keep them straight. I could rewrite this as this. But really, this is nothing more than yet another constant. So I don't have to keep track of c2 and c1. I can simply write this solution as this, which is exactly what I came up with with trial and error. So the method I used to do this is I got all the x's on one side of the equation and all the y's on the other side of the equation, then I simply integrated. This is called a separable equation. Let's be a little bit more general. If I have a first order differential equation that can be put in this form, then this is called a separable equation. I can rewrite it like this, and then I can rearrange terms, and then I can integrate both sides. And if I can find a closed form expression for both sides, then I'm gonna be able to solve for what my y value is to make this differential equation true. Let's look at the example that we ended the last lecture with. And again, instead of prime notation, I'm going to write it in Leibniz notation. And then I'm going to rearrange both sides. Now I'm going to integrate both sides. And I get close to an explicit form of the solution of this differential equation. This is implicit form. That is, I haven't solved for y directly. There are some cases where I won't ask you to solve explicitly, but this I will ask you to solve explicitly. And how are we going to do that? Well, all I'm going to have to do is exponentiate both sides, or I like to call it e to the both sides. If I do that, e to the natural log of y is simply y. And I can rewrite the right-hand side as this using exponent rules. And this is where I'm going to warn you that you're going to have to review exponent rules and logarithmic rules. The rule that I've used here is x to the a plus b is equal to x to the a times x to the b. Again, go back and review your exponent rules and your logarithmic rules because we'll be using those a lot and I'll just assume that you know them. What's interesting about this e to the c is that's just another constant. e is a number, it's an irrational number, but it's still just a number. So a number raised to a constant is just another constant. So I'm going to change that e to the c as another c. Now this is one thing that always bothered me when I was first learning differential equations, that we seem to be very, very sloppy with our constants of integration. Well, they're there, and if all I care about is what the constant is, I don't care to have to find e to that constant. I just want to know what number is going to multiply in front of my e to the 1 half x squared. I think the textbook uses other constants. They'll use d's or sometimes again c1s and c2s, but I just keep writing it as c. Sometimes I write it as a bigger c to show that it's holding more than just one constant, but it really doesn't matter. If I were to use an initial condition for this problem, what I want to know is what number is multiplying my e to the 1 half x squared. I don't really care that it originally came from an e to the c. 
And I can also at this point just drop my absolute value bars because I've got that constant to take care of a negative sign. This is the easiest method to solve differential equations, and it actually does help in a lot of situations. Let's look at another situation. Okay, let's see if we can separate this. I think I can do this. And now I'm going to integrate both sides. This is again where your Calc 2 skills will need to be refreshed. Some of the top skills you'll need to do is be able to handle partial fractions. You'll certainly have to be able to do U substitutions. You generally won't have to do anything with a trigonometric substitution or anything like that, um, but you certainly have to be able to integrate by parts. All right, so if I look at the left-hand side, you might think, well, maybe this is a U sub situation, but it, the easiest way to solve this is to split this fraction up into two separate fractions and solve from there. One other thing I'd like to do for this is to clean it up a little bit and multiply both sides by 2. Notice again, I left the c as c because 2 times c is still yet another constant. What I could do is make it in a different color. This is one where I would ask you to leave it in implicit form. That is, it would be very difficult to solve for this in a form where it would be y equals something. I might, though, ask you to do this which is remembering your logarithmic property. That is, if I have a times ln of x, it's the same thing as ln of x to the a. You'll be using that rule quite a bit. So this would be my solution in implicit. One last word of warning. This problem looks like it's very easy to separate since it's very close to the one we just did where it was multiplication, but I don't think we're going to be able to separate this. If I go ahead and multiply dx by both sides, you can see there's no way to tease out that y and get it on the left-hand side. So this one is not separable, which means I can't solve it using this method.